top of a mountain in Utah in the middle of the desert. We're here for the Red Bull Rampage. We're going to see 28 of the world's greatest mountain bike free riders hurl themselves down big cliffs over big crevasses. There's jumps, there's dirt. This guy's been up here for the last, I don't know, three months or so with excavators, digging jumps and quarter pipes. I tell you what, it's Evil Knievel style, some of these jumps. Not only that, you've got cactus, you've got wild turkeys, you've got mountain cats, you've got coyotes, you've got rattlesnakes, and you've got spiders. So there is quite a lot to go wrong, but I tell you what, it's not often that I really get excited about these kind of events, but this one, truly, I really can't wait to see the event. This is without doubt the most respected as well as the most feared mountain bike contest on the planet. In 2001 a new mountain bike contest was launched and it changed the face of the sport forever. This event gave birth to a new discipline. Red Bull Rampage is freeride mountain biking. Following its first year Rampage became a highlight in the contest calendar and the virgin mountains of Utah set in America's old wild west became the contest to make your name at. It's an absolutely amazing spot. I mean, I, I kind of equate it to almost like I'm a skier and I go to Alaska. It's like that, you know, it's like there's ski hills and then there's big hills and this is the same thing. There's mountain biking and then there's the Utah desert and it's it's the promised land for, for mountain biking for sure. Once a regular in the free ride mountain bike calendar, the contest took a break for four years. But now it's back and it's back in a big way. Event guru and big mountain legend Todd Barber is to Rampage what Clint Eastwood the man is to Westerns and has spent the last four years on a global quest to find a new venue for this epic competition. I was in China last year in the Gobi Desert and I've been in Baja and I've been, I had 11 places that I had researched through Google Maps and Google Earth and, and it's pretty ironic that it's uh, 10 miles away from the old spot. Darren Bearclaw and I drove 1200 miles from Salt Lake City down to Flagstaff, Arizona. So when we showed up here, actually Bearclaw was like, this is it. He was like, this is the spot. Me and Todd were like, alright, let's go drive around all over Utah. Yeah. So we spent a couple days and driving around forever and sure enough, you know, the location was just 20 miles away from the old one just because this area specifically just creates some of the best terrain that we've ever seen. And then we actually came out here with G and uh, the Atherton's in April and uh, did some filming and they just reinforced what a great spot it was and then when they got here they were just the same thing. Their eyes were huge and they just said, this is the spot. We were actually riding and filming on the other side of this big ridge behind us there. And like, we all hiked to the top and we're all stoked on what we'd found that side. And we just climbed over the ridge and looked down and, and we were just like, Jesus, what, what have we found here? Well, the first year I literally thought I was going to kill somebody. I mean, it's just, I mean, I don't think I slept for a week before that thing. It was just like... And I was like, are people just going to show up to this mountain and fall down and on their heads, you know, and it's just going to be a total joke. And then, you know, sure enough, one person shows up and, you know, they start eyeing things up. And the biggest jump that I saw there, I'm like, no one's ever going to hit that thing. And all of a sudden, someone pops off it. And then, and then all of a sudden, it was just game on. I mean, the floodgates opened up and everybody saw what everybody else was doing. To me, that's like my best memory of it all because it was like literally right, right there seeing something just spark. It was like, all right, we got... This, this, this scene is born right here. Red Bull Rampage is for Red Mountain Bike, bottom line. So what is it about the Virgin Mountains? A mixture of steep gradients and perfect soft terrain to cushion the landing of the huge jumps makes Utah the best freeride mountain bike location anywhere. We've hiked up the mountain and to guide us through the next half hour is ex-pro Rob Warner. Rob, this place is big. Oh, it's, I mean, I came, I was lucky enough to come here four years ago for the last Red Bull Rampage we had here, but it's on a different scale. The sport is progressing so quickly, and as you can see, yeah, it's, it's on an absolutely huge scale. I mean, you stand on the top of those lips, and it makes, it, it makes your legs shake. It's so big. How, how is the competition going to run? Well, we've got 28 of the world's best free riders here, actually mixing it in there with a, a few of the world's best downhillers too. We're going to see the boundaries of what a mountain bike can do, push beyond all the limits. What are the riders going to have to do to get all the way down in one piece? Well, they're going to have to link a run together using various components of that course that they're happy with. I mean, they're going to be doing 
big gaps. They're going to be riding down near vertical cliffs. It, it blows me away. I've been around this sport a long time. I walk up there and I'm like, they're crazy. I mean, it's on a different scale to anything we've ever seen. Rob, there is a true sense of occasion here on this mountain. Yeah. The qualifiers are about to start. We're actually on one of the lines that some of the riders are going to take. So we're going to hike down to the bottom of the mountain and get straight into the qualifiers. As with backcountry skiing, the idea here is that riders must find the most creative line down the face of the mountain. They're judged on a number of different factors, including tricks and style, but to reiterate, the most important aspect here is a rider throwing down their own distinctive line. There are all kinds of riders here from all disciplines of the sport, including world downhill champion Rick G. Atherton, trick specialist Cameron McCall, and big mountain specialist Canadian Darren Bearcloth. Darren Bearcloth just about to drop in one of the first big names we've seen so far on this line. Bearclaw, an absolute legend in free ride. One of the first guys to ever 360 dropped, and he's awesome. He's a big mountain rider, but he's amazing at slope style. Kind of blurs the line between those two things. Good solid run there man, not taking any prisoners either, fast, nailed everything, I mean you've got to be super happy right? Yeah, I was super stoked, you know, I rolled through the whole line, super fast, no hesitation on any of the uh, drops or the rolls and that's kind of what I was going for, you know, it really makes a difference when you see a rider roll into something and hesitate and bobble his front tire, you know, rather than someone go in and just charge. So that's what I just tried to do. One of the heavyweights about to step up, Cameron McCall. I saw a video of him the other day, he's mind blowing. Oh, Cam McCall, you know, one of the fun loving Californians, but he is not scared to go big. And he has a huge bag of tricks, and he's definitely one of the big contenders here, absolutely. In fact, he was one of the first guys to really bust out these big tricks on full suspension bikes. He is a slope style rider, but this will play right into his hands. Cam, you look as though you're having fun out there. Oh, loads of fun, I'll tell you what, that's exactly the run that I wanted. I wanted to ride it real fast, boost the hips, and uh, that's exactly what happened, so can't really ask for anything more. Next up, 17-year-old Brandon Seminer, the youngest rider competing here at Rampage. The uber-relaxed Canadian is taken to the mountain with grace and ease. thing to notice here with Seminer is his ability to mix it up, meaning a fluid style whilst throwing down tricks. And that's what the judges are looking for, mixing it up. Yeah, you got the big no-hander in there halfway down. Yeah, a no-hander on the step down on the bottom is pretty fun. Super blind, so you're just coming in, like, just let go of the brakes and yeah. <laughs> Sick. You had fun doing that, didn't you? Oh, yeah. In a bid to get through to the final, some of the younger riders had to go big. But going big has its price, such as Andy Taylor's attempted backflip. Another rider pushing the limits of what's possible on a bike was New Zealander Kelly McGarry. I thought it was all over. I looked back up and I saw you back flipping like about 40 foot, getting all loose and up like that. Made my day. How, how was it? How was your run? Come on. I couldn't believe it happened. Threw down my helmet. I thought that was it. I thought, that's my run. I've ruined it. We only get one run. So I chucked my helmet, no peak, and uh, went down and uh, just shaped up that tabletop and flipped it. With the world's greatest trying their best to tame this beast of a mountain, time to calm things down a little bit and meet two of the UK's finest. There may be 28 riders here in the qualifiers, but there are two names that stand out from the crowd. Brothers G and Dan Atherton. G came second at the last rampage and is the current downhill world champion. Dan is a podium regular at the World Cup four cross and downhill and one of the world's most respected riders. It's the only kind of event where downhill racers and free riders can kind of blend and mix it up together. And uh, I think the judging is kind of not wholly based on trips. So, you know, they look at fluidity and line choice. So hopefully we'll have like a good chance against those boys. The cool thing about Rampage, you know, there's, there aren't like a few riders that just do this kind of stuff, you know, it's, it's pretty much a, a different ball game for everyone. Like you've got the guys that ride downhill and, and like you say, will have the advantage of having that fluidity and being able to keep up a momentum down the hill, but then the dirt jumpers are going to have the rad tricks, so 
it's kind of a blend, like my brother said, and it's not like there's one guy that's always doing this and going to have the advantage. It's just like a, a mixture of all the different riders into, into something new, really. There's nothing like this, and that's why it's been so missed, you know, these last few years. Because it, you need something like this just to show how big the riders can go and how much they can push it and, and what they can do on the bikes. In the Startgate, G. Atherton. He's been confident all weekend and he's been fast. Well, you know, he's the 2008, he's the current world downhill champion. And when I've seen him in practice, Billy has been eating this up. You know, he's got those tricks and people are saying you might need tricks to win it, but I think he's just gonna go so big, he's just gonna blow him out of the water. I mean, watching him in practice, my heart's been in my mouth because he is launching huge off those drops. So calm, I mean, you know, he's used to riding under pressure though, let's not forget, he's just come off the back of a World Cup season, eight rounds, one run. He's used to this high pressure environment, he thrives on it. I don't know quite what he does in there, but he's got a Vulcan mindset and uh, he makes the most of it. You were flying. Yeah, dude, I wasn't hanging around, you know. Just gotta get it done. You could see the flags gusting and you know, like I knew it was picking up a bit and then sure enough coming into the big like triple step down I was doing off the ridge it was just gusting me out a little bit and like I had to whip out a bit to allow for the wind and that unfortunately blew me offline a bit. I just hammered through a few bushes and kind of got a bit loose but I pulled it back and cleaned up a bit. Well we weren't disappointed with that run, that was ridiculous, like I said to him, I looked up and he was halfway down already. Oh yeah, when he come down in 30 seconds, the guy's a maniac, you can just see how confident he is at the moment, he's riding on the crest of a wave, and for me he just lifted the level, I mean, so fast, so smooth and so big, what more do you want? Make this call Rob, did he make the final? He made the final, Kelly's and you know the way he's riding, he might actually yeah. win the final, he's incredible. G Atherton, the fastest man down the mountain. The other notable Atherton in the house on the mountain today, Dan Atherton, great rider, knocked his head earlier though. Oh yeah, I was stood right there, he came down so hard and rang his bell, pretty much sparked out in his truck all afternoon, but I know he's going to get up there and do this this afternoon. G's had a great run today. Is that going to help or hinder Dan? Oh, I'm sure I know. I mean, those two brothers are tight. They ride together the whole time and, you know, they practice together. You know, Dan, though, probably lives a little bit in the shadow with G. G's world downhill champion. But Dan is an absolutely incredible rider. Might not quite have the mind frame of, uh, of G, the confidence, but... He's got the skills, though, right? He's absolutely got the skills. You know, when they practice together, apparently there's no talent between them. Did you set up out the gate and you were just charging it all? Like, I haven't seen anyone else going fast. You were it's just so like, much more fun. I know, I know. It was mint. The guy on the mic's like, I don't think he's going to make it to the bottom with his speed. And I was like, oh God, slow down. He's That's oh, indeed. With the Athletons on fire, qualifying is done and dusted, and we have a serious final on our hands. Qualifying is seventh is Dan Atherton, then in fourth, Darren Barraclough, third is G Atherton, second, Brandon Seminet, and qualifying in first place, Cameron McCall. Not many guys took themselves out today, so we've got the cream of the crop going through into that other valley, which promises to be even on a bigger scale than we've already seen today. You make sure you stick with us, because we'll be right back after the break for the finals of the most intense mountain bike event in the world, the Red Bull Rampage.
Welcome back to Red Bull Rampage, high up in the Utah desert. We've already seen 14 riders make it through to the final, and the level is going to be off the scale here in this, the most innovative mountain bike event in the world. We are ready. I mean, this is not your average dirt jumps. Like, you come here and you create your own line, and if it works, it works. If it doesn't, then you crash and go to the hospital. When you stand down here, it's ridiculous to think that that's the top of the course, and we were up there all day, and you ride from there. Like, from here, it just looks like, like unmanageable terrain. It looks like it's miles away, but once you get up there, you can see, you know, it just kind of all opens up to you. trying to get to that bottom alive and you know thinking you just got to be calm and keep a clear head and just kind of just flow with it don't think too much don't overanalyze or you'll get yourself in trouble when you're up there in practice and you're sectioning it it's it's kind of it's much easier than when you're in a, in a comp and you're getting nervous and yeah. you start to panic a bit so if I can just chill out and, and ride like I do in practice I think I'm fine We're just about to go into the finals. There's such a, an air here of expectation. You know, I'm nervous. Big isn't the word to describe it. Yesterday was, you know, it was massive. And, and you know, luckily everyone got down pretty safely. Today it's stepped up another level or three. I'm up there with some of the seasoned uh, free riders. Some of those guys that didn't make it through yesterday and they're like, this is off the hook. You know, this is madness. Well, we've seen all the qualifiers. We've seen all the riders, but this is what it's all about. It's the finals, Red Bull Rampage. The finals threw down some incredible runs and the standard was through the roof. Some of the contenders including free riding legends Paul Basagosha, Robbie Bourdain and Darren Barakoff just didn't have their day and fell victim to the unforgiving mountain terrain. The big names continue to struggle here in Utah, including defending champion Carl Strait and first place qualifier Cameron McCall, who jumped the 60 foot man made slope style obstacle, one of the many new additions in the contest area. Despite some epic lines being carved down the mountain, the heavy hitters failed to deliver. But perhaps the biggest upset was our boys G and Dan Atherton. Only moments before the final, in last minute practice, G crashed out while exploring his line. The crash was worse than most thought and G was unable to compete thanks to a dislocated shoulder. Not a good day at all for the Brits as brother Dan also pulls out the final due to a concussion from a knock sustained on the mountain just before the previous day's qualifiers. Just took a big tumble, you know, he's had a big crash on a, a gnarly line I built and dislocated my shoulder, so, like, the qualifiers were gnarly, but when everyone went up there and built the finals line, you could just see, just see it getting out of hand. Proof, if you need it, of just how hardcore Rampage is, as the world's best struggle to tame the beast that's the Virgin Mountains. We join the final action now with Kurt Sorge and commentating mountain sign, Rob Warner. Yes, Sorge. Yes, Sorge. Well, Kurt Sorge then dropping in this guy. Actually won a competition I hold in Canada where you send in video clips of yourselves riding. He won that comp, got himself a deal. Now he's a professional riding to the rampage, taking a unique line down there. Oh, he's dropped in that steep, riding that ridge, and a big gap there. So far, he's nailed this. This is good for Sorgi. They call him McLovin. Never goes home from a party without a chick. And he's going for the big gap. And he tricks the big gap and lands it. He whipped the bike out over there and he gets the hip. Well, Sorge over that big, big gap filled these riders with so much fear. Actually, even found the composure to throw in a trick. It's one of the most solid runs we've seen. Making his way down to the finish area. Well, Sorge sprinted down that hill at it. Got some good, strong pedal strokes in there. Knew he had plenty. Popped the lip. Went really high, whipped the bike out a little bit. The judges all like that. I mean, that's a big gap just to get over, let alone throw the thing sideways. Landed it perfectly, nailed the rest of his run. Awesome run there from Sorge. Stuck everything, I went forward. There's one big gap on there actually that I never hit. So I was kind of scary. I didn't even know where I was going. The last two drops actually. For Sorge's second run, he tried to go even bigger over the 60-foot gap, but take a close look at the landing and you'll see why he was stopped in his tracks. 
not quite the sweet spot he was looking for. Next up is Thomas Vanderham and back to Rob Warner Mountainside. Big man in legend, Thomas Vanderham dropping in. He's taken a precarious route down that cliff face. Look where he's riding. This guy seems to have been around forever. A big mountain rider, we know he's gonna hit this huge 60 foot gap here. Saw him doing practice, he actually over jumped it by 20 foot. Could have gone as much as 80 feet. He's had his ankles taped and here he comes and he's gonna drop in and tackle this absolutely massive chasm. Oh, Van der Ham, he's over it cleanly. Look at the speed, he's gone straight into another drop. Clean again. It even makes it over that hip there. Well, that's awesome from Van der Ham. No tricks, your big man and guy going big. That's what we expected to see. And Van der Ham takes it home. One of the few guys not to crash. Hand in the air, he knows that was a good one. That chasm, that gap, you got a ramp in it. It's a good 60 feet across there. They're going to be 45 feet in the air. There is no room for error. Only the biggest guns have got the ball to tackle that. That was insane. Thanks, man. Now, how are you feeling right now? Oh, stoked, you know, stoked it went well. It's clean, it's good to get out of the way on the first run, and yeah, just really happy. For Van der Ham's second run, he pushed it even bigger and pulled a suicide over the gap. That's two hands off the handlebars. Incredible bike control. He landed the trick, but further on down the course, he crashed. Good effort, though, from Van der Ham. Next up is Canadian wonder kid, Brandon Seminuk. Brandon Seminuk about to drop in after his first run. He fell on that 360 down the bottom. He seemed pretty unfazed. If he holds that together, he's definitely got a place on the podium. Here he comes, here's Semenek on track. He's gonna come around this little cliff goat trail. So expect to see some tricks from this guy. Stomps another big can can and a suicide. Both hands off the handlebars, huge extension. Now this is what caught him in round one. Has he got the balls to go for it again? Oh, and he lands it. He pulls the 360 drop. That will certainly put him in first place. That's an incredible run from 7'8". He had the guts to go for it again, and it might well have paid off for him. Phil, he's got to be happy with that. Stoked to have my run. It's like stressing out of the top about that last three. It's like the one thing on my run that was just super 50-50 about. But uh, yeah, just to like ride out of it, it was like amazing. And at the top section, you weren't going slow either. No, top section, I just tried to pan over it. Couldn't wait to get down to the bottom just to finish my run. <laughs> How's Rampage been for you, Brandon? First time here? Rampage is an experience for sure. Like, like I've heard about this contest for years and so much coverage of it. And to like, actually be a part of it, it's just insane. Like, it's, the, it's, it's out of the world. Like. A nightmare for the judges trying to get their heads around this one. But after careful consideration, the results are in. And in third place is Thomas Vanderham. Second goes to Kurt Sorge, but taking the win. Brandon, 17 years old, coming here for the first time and stepping up to the podium, first place. How are you feeling? It's a whole different event for me. Like, you know, a lot of big mountain. I've only been here once, so it's a little weird. I know a lot of these guys had experience on the course, but uh, I was so stoked to get my run, and yeah, I guess it was enough. <laughs> Rob, what an unreal event, Brandon Semenak, 17 years old, coming here for the first time taking the win. I know, I don't think I've just spoken to him, I don't think he can actually believe it, but that second run he did was so solid, you know, crashed out the first, it was a little dazed, but he came back so strong, and under pressure he delivered, and what a worthy champion. We promised you the best mountain bike action you've ever seen, Red Bull Rampage absolutely delivered. We'll be back here next year for the best mountain bike event in the world. Yeah.